Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Ollie, thank you so much for calling me and having me. Um, I'm absolutely excited to be here, and if I understood uh, the directions, it's not so much about talking about uh, quoting the book, but what has been my experience with Step 11, am I correct? So I have a number of um, things here. There's a lot of people um, on these seven pages, and I hope you take a little time to scroll scroll through and look through the frames. There's some people here um, who keep me sober, who keep me accountable, who uh, were growing together, um, laugh together. Uh, my partner is on this meeting. My brother is on this meeting. Sisters are on this meeting. Not sure if my mom has jumped on. But I just have to tell you that um, a deep and effective and consistent and constant Step 11 practice brings um uh, transparency and uh, just accessibility. And uh, I think that that's um, a lot of what I'm going to share tonight. I have to tell you that I feel extremely emotional. And I know that it's just um, the movement in the heart. I'm so honored to share what I have experienced and learned through Step 11. It's not every day that you get offered a format to do that. but I am deeply moved at the opportunity um, to do that. And then the, the, the Q and a part, you know, let's chop it up. Let's get into it. Let's, let's talk afterwards because this is how I have grown in effectiveness. I was talking to someone the other day who was having a hard time, I think with my, um, peering in deeply to someone else's uh, spiritual path and uh, where I was hearing them, listening to them talk. And um, step 11 and, and, and practice of it consistently, you know, these whole 38 years um, has given me a clear, precise, unafraid message. I'm not tripping about how we recover. Our book is the basic text and it is tells that we have, you know, uh, precise explains to us, explains to us precisely how we recover. And it's my experience that the other 11 steps are the steps that uh, keep us sober. But step 11 is the step that keeps us growing. And that's a very uh, different energy, a very different type of um, engagement. And, you know, it it takes um, incredible humility and 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 a state of being teachable to to really be able to move with, flow with, be changed and impacted by the powers and the mystery of step 11. So again, um, this is my experience and, um, I, anything is unclear, disagree with, uh, want information on, I hope we can do it in the question and answer. And if not, I'm, I'm always available to talk about this. So I chose our thought life will be placed on a, a much higher plane And of course, it says when our thinking is cleared of, you know, false motives. But I just first wanted to declare, I think, one of the most beautiful promises. I've heard people share in um, Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, uh, they'll stand at the podium and say that, you know, my mind is a ghetto or my mind is a bad neighborhood. And that has always broken my heart and offended me. 
for those of us who live in or work in and dedicate our lives to the hood because there's great beauty in the hood, great wholesomeness in the hood. But I, I have often wondered, you know, how can you be sober, sane, effective, and happy if you believe that something is permanently wrong with you, let alone this brain, this God-given life force tool, transmitter of the cosmos, deep mystery, ingenuity, innovation, creativity, insight, beauty. How can you keep promoting that from the podium when, in fact, the hallmark of my disease as an alcoholic is that it centers in my mind? So if this treatment plan doesn't actually heal my mind, I am the first hundred men and women say that if we follow what they did exactly as they did, we can be recovered ED. It also says in this book and in our supporting literature that if you do what the first hundred did, exactly as they did it, it will be as though you never, ever had the problem to begin with. So for those of you who may think, uh, you know, I'm saying too much, I just have to say this for myself, Ali. Uh, you know, there's many lines in 86 to 88 that helped me know that, this is about my mind being returned to me. This is about my mind being healed. This is about sanity returning and sanity being the issue, not just around my relationship with alcohol, but around everything. Because when my thought life changes, the way I live will change. Because every single word I speak and every single action I take comes from my thought life. So if I have a thought life based on resentment, anger, disease, um, isolation, loneliness, racism, hatred, greed, delusion, you owe me, here's the campaign to make everybody pay, guess what I'm getting back? And then my book says, we wonder why we're having such a hard going of things. It's because of what I'm thinking. I've also learned here through step 11 that my thought life, what I am thinking is like, you know, the universe is like a photocopier. What I put out there, I get back. So what I'm thinking about is what I'm getting back. Have you ever just sat down without getting involved in your thoughts? Just write down real fast what your mind is spewing out. We, I did that and I was like, girl, no wonder why you ain't winning. No wonder why you ain't winning. And this is where step 11 has come to help. So it says on, 80, on 86, for after all, God gave us brains to use. That's an affirmative for our brains. Our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when our thinking is cleared of wrong motives. Yes, there's a condition for folks who say there's no stipulations and conditions in this program. Bill is messing us up all the time with we as if when you're ready all the time. You go down a little bit and it says we are often surprised how the right answers come after we have tried this for a while. That's thinking. That's intuition. We're praying for inspiration. We're asking God for an intuitive thought or a decision. Here's my mind again. What used to be the hunch or an occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind. This mind of ours is here to help us and help others, right? He also says, we find that our thinking will, as time passes, be more and more on the plane of inspiration. And he says, we come to rely upon that. And it says later on, we ask for the right thought or action. So just to say, please, if your mind is a dangerous, horrible place, 
uh, may I invite you to dive into step 11 and get your minds back. My very first uh, practice with step 11 came when I was um, introduced to Al-Anon. My mother got sober when I was 14 years old and she sent me to Al-Anon. I got sober when I was 19 years old. So that's a lot of belly full of booze, head full of 12 steps. Um, But uh, in Al-Anon, they had a step 11. And let me share with you, for those of you who may uh, wonder, my very first um, 11 step practice was cursing and walking. I cursed God. I cursed at everything and everybody I cursed. And uh, if people think that the word fuck cannot be expressive, uh, they just don't know very many people who use it. Well, think of Richard Pryor, think of Lenny Bruce. There's some folks that use it. It can be an adjective, a pronoun, a noun, a verb, an adverb. It, it, It just everything was cursing someone out. But it was this thing that I have to tell you that the world wasn't right. Nothing was right. And uh, the only way that I could be somewhat sociable was cursing and walking. That was my first meditation practice. I was also then introduced to daily journaling. Um, And I have to tell you that the contemplative practice coming out of most uh, Christian-based religions really has its place. You know, this contemplative um, writing down kind of your innermost uh, thoughts, um, that can become dangerous in my experience if it's just a tirade and a harangue. Um, But what I did find uh, necessary was to be able to speak wholeheartedly um, and just to be able to lay all of my thoughts, concerns, and worries. If you're worrying a lot, may I suggest that's another form of thought. And I needed God to heal me from worry. Worry uh, justified a lot of um, unseemingly unwholesome, unkind behavior in my life. So this daily journaling, writing, uh, don't get it twisted. Uh, It was cussing and writing (laughs) for quite a bit of it as well. Um, And then when I got sober in Alcoholics Anonymous at 19 years old, um, I actually found these for you. I don't know if I can find them, but uh, this was my first pamphlet, this just for today. Um, This one thing socialized me in the world and uh, taught me about um, goodness, how to do something uh, for someone else and not get found out. Um, So beautiful. I will exercise my soul in three ways. I will do somebody a good turn and not get found out. If anybody knows of it, it will not count. I will do at least two things I don't want to do just for exercise. I will not show anyone that my feelings are hurt. They may be hurt, but today I will not show it. I used to spend the first hour uh, upon awakening, uh, writing this out, what my plan was going to be, and then um, looking over it at night to see if I fulfilled any of these things. I remember the line that used to plague me the most because I just didn't understand it. Just for today, I will be happy. This assumes to be true what Abraham Lincoln said that most folks are as happy as they make up their minds to be. I have to tell you, I didn't know how to do that. And isn't that the crux of the problem? You know, um, they say that if we do prayer and meditation, particularly meditation, we will be given emotional balance. And my emotions... Um, are exactly what get me uh, to drinking again, right? So emotions really is the crux of the matter, as is balance. 
But these are just such beautiful, simple, compassionate directions, and it really helped. I was also given the five mental hindrances, which is Buddhist practice. I was um, 19 years old when I was given that, the Just for Today, and Mindfulness by Thich Nhat Hanh, a, a real small pamphlet. Um, and in that pamphlet from Thich Nhat Hanh was uh, walking meditation. And I started um, walking. I have to tell you, in my first few years of sobriety, and, and often in my sobriety, um, loneliness has been a really challenging um, aspect to my living, my lived experience. Um, you know, there's a lot about me that crosses a lot of different intersectionalities and has me in a lot of different parts of the world and in the world. And uh, the sensitivity of being an artist, an alcoholic, this girl child in this skin suit, uh, I uh, had a very, very intense um, reality most of the times. And I just didn't find people who were suffering the way that I was. And so walking was a great way to discharge that energy out of my body. I want to say to you um, that my 11-step practice has to and always has had a huge component of exercise. I have had to exercise. We call it trauma nowadays. There was so much going on uh, growing up in physical violence and violence on my body and many things that the sitting still... Uh, of the 11-step practice was not available to me until I was maybe 20 years sober. But I had a walking practice. And uh, I had a walking at practice, I mean, up until today, walking is a huge part. But I mean, I was walking um, every day. So exercise, and there were times when I was doing kickboxing. You guys remember, what was his name? The, the Taibo guy. Uh, whatever his name was, Rodney, whatever, man, I remember I named, you know, he said, name your person and just go after him. I'll tell you one time after uh, a practice, he came up to me, he goes, girl, whose ass are you kicking? My God, that was intense. But, you know, all of that stuff, you know, the body practices have been extremely important um, and critical in my spiritual 11 step practice, get that stuff up and out and then sit down and put my attention on um, an idea or thought of God. Um, I want to tell you about another cool book, the 24-hour book. And I hope you guys um, put in dates of what you're suffering with, what you think you're never going to overcome. Um, I hope you do. Books are uh, spiritual companions, and, and I read over these things, you know, um, each day a new beginning is something I've had since 1985, this particular book. Uh, this is one I've had uh, since then as well. And it's been so beautiful to read the things I never, ever thought I was going to overcome or have freedom from, and over the years read them and go, oh, wow, you know, so beautiful. Um, the 24-hour book is about three things, booze and God. And uh, Richmond, Richmond Walker, who wrote the book, suffered greatly uh, with isolation, loneliness, uh, an ability to stay sober. But more than that, you know, faith that, that the universe is, is benevolent and has his best interests at heart. And so one of the things I can tell you to do is that whatever particular brand of spiritual suffering you have, I so encourage you to find uh, spiritual buddies, companions, where you can read their process up and out. And, and let, you know, if you don't trust someone on these little frames, trust them and try what they did. Do you know uh, Howard Thurman? You know, I can cry just mentioning Howard Thurman. You know, he's helped me immensely, you know. Um, but... The 24-hour book, turning statements into questions, just like we do with the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. Is this me? Have I felt this way? Where am I at with this today? Um, meditation, uh, prayer and meditation, it talks in our book is about 
we have need to have the proper attitude and work at it. You know, Kobe Bryant was so good because he was always on the court. Tiger Woods broke everything and mesmerized you because he was always on that golf course. You know, whoever it is you're thinking about, you know, it is because that is where they are all the time. We just saw a movie about Spielberg, you know, his life and whatever you want to think about him. The cat was making movies for forever, whenever he had a second. With whatever he had. And that's what makes any muscle strong. What is the proper attitude? For me, it's been focus, being undisturbed focus. See what the inner essence of something is. Where do I stand with it now? Um, and our book talks about constructive imagination. You know, the negativity in my mind, the way the negative thoughts, the gossiping, the criticizing, the ranting, the judgment, the criticism, on and on and on, uh, the violence in my mind about folks, that is called, you know, negative, right? Uh, imagination. I remember one time Brett Bozeman said to me about my practice, you know, he said, Sydney, no joke. He says, I would say in Alcoholics Anonymous, you are the most intelligent human being I have ever met. Black, white, gay, straight, male, female, whatever. He says, you really are highly intelligent. And he says, and I believe you've been given certain gifts by God of intuition and insight. And he says, but what I'm asking you is, how are you using them to build up the people around you there for yourself? If your prayer life and meditation life still got you fucked up, I'm saying you ain't doing it right. I'm saying it's just another exercise in self. I was taught that um, prayer is to ask God to direct my thinking. Um I've also known as I've gone on in 11th step prayers to stop asking for shit. No need to ask God for anything. Destiny happens. And you know what? Sydney doesn't write her destiny. I gave that one up. My destiny is written what I'm asking for. Is the selflessness and capacity to live the life that God has in store for me. Every moment of every day, particularly when I think things aren't going my way and folks aren't treating me right. What I prayer also is, is aspirations, incredible heart desires, um, prayers for others. Pray for folks instead of gossiping, complaining, tearing them up. I challenge you to pray for people like... You know, that 14 day prayer. Yes. You know, Dr. Paul, but I mean, put that aside and really pray for people to have every single thing you want for yourself and whatever it is that will grant their freedom and happiness. Do that. And man, like there's just something that happened to me in doing that. And if I couldn't get up and get excited about that, I knew that that was self and I had to ask God to remove that. Because you see, for me, and you know, I was just talking to someone who I love so much today. I don't know what you all want in alcoholics anymore. I don't know what the fuck you want. I figure if I'm on this Zoom with you and we are sober, God, that is everything. There are people in these Box says, I know you love me and I love you. You're praying for my life and I'm praying for yours. That is everything. Do you know that that's not how I came to you? Do you know that I see many of you in these eight pages who I don't know, but I already know how challenging it can be. And I am pulling for you. I was talking to my sponsor. The other day, uh, I've had the privilege of coming back from uh, 30 some odd days in India and Nepal. And I was sharing all this stuff with her about um, what I found there. And hopefully I can share a little bit with you. 
But she said something to me that just floored me because, you know, I think you guys can hear I got a pretty fine mind. I got a great brain and I'm laying it all down to her. I mean, man, I'm just boom, 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 boom. You know, we're talking about this guy and this deity and this boop, 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 boop. And she said, you know what, Sydney? She says, the longer I stay sober, what I find people have most difficulty with is actually seeing themselves the way God sees them. And I thought, there it is. Not the worst, not fucked up, not broken, not, you know, incapable of having a relationship, not none of those things. You know, the fact that, you know, um, there has been a powerful transformation in my life and yours as a result of coming together in this thing called Alcoholics Anonymous. It's everything. It's everything. And it's the opportunity. I mean, this is a deep spiritual program that talks about that my disease centers and my thinking and step 11 talks all about our thinking. So these God-given, the proper attitude, right, is these God-given um, tool, this transmitter of the cosmos, deep minute mystery, you know, imagination, creativity, you know, beauty. And meditation is deep listening, breath that sweeps the mind. It's, you know, five letters, L-E-T-G-O, a clearing out of everything that isn't reality, and we should discuss reality, because if there's anything that's wrong or not as it should be, I have found that that's actually not reality. That's my rejection of reality. Nobody said I would never have cancer. Nobody said I would not, you know, that I would lose the ability to have my kids. Nobody said that divorce wouldn't befall me. And none of that is God. I think here's another thing I found in step 11, you know, God gets blamed for everything, but it's actually not God. So there's so much beauty and step 11 has helped me see the beauty of life in any and every situation. And it's helped me through self forgetting. And, you know, just for today is the first one. Uh, that really, really taught me how to forget the self. Um, And then I've got into more and more practice. Uh, Meditation and prayer is me reestablishing every single day uh, my desire to do God's will. Isn't that a trip? Um, So how much time do I have? Who's ever timing me? Is it like 10, 15? Am I about right? You got Calvin, is that it? Ten minutes? Or nine? I think you said nine. Okay, let me do this quickly. Um, there's so many things in the 12 and 12 as well. Um, meditation, there's no, there's no place for debate. Uh, but the interesting thing about it is, is they keep talking about grace grace, grace, and grace, another word is beauty. Um, This deep listening um, is about inquiry, not asking why, but how. How is it that my thinking is defeating me? Um, How is this affecting my relationship with alcohol and my relationship with others? Where did I first hear this thing that keeps going on that should be a certain way? Is it true? This reality Um, The Language of Letting Go is another huge book um, that I ask all the folks who I sponsor along with the 24-hour book. But The Language of Letting Go uh, really talks about uh, the way in which I keep seeking people's approval. So therefore, they're my God and not God. And it's so great to just hear it uh, firsthand. My mother gave me this book. My mother's uh, She gave it to me in uh, 2010, and I couldn't start really reading it until 2014. That's how sick I was. So I love to date things and just put them aside. God always comes back around and says, yo, you remember that book I gave you? And this is a lifesaver. And again, you know, just dialogue with the book. There's so many things underlined and little prayers put in for people and myself 
there's so many books that have helped um, help me understand what life is and how to um, really look at um, reality in a different way and look at suffering. Um, Just want to read this to you on the bottom of of 97 and then um, share a little bit with you about um, my practice. It says when we turn, it says for the same reason, uh, when we refuse air, light or food, the body suffers. And when we turn away from meditation and prayer, we likewise deprive our minds, our emotions and our intuitions of vitality, vitally needed support. As the body can fail its purpose for lack of nourishment, so can the soul. I have found that in the 38 years that I've been sober, there's no way that I can continue to do the same type of 11th 11th step practice. It's had to evolve and and grow. Um, And that I have been through the emotional ringer a number of times in sobriety. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm doing anything wrong. I have found that it means that God is calling me higher and that I have had to look for new nourishment. Um, Meditation, again, is about emotional balance for isn't this the crux of my problem? Um, The principles that uh, meditation and prayer have helped me uh, it says our book, you know, that we've been discussing and that have helped me find is love, forgiveness, harmony, truth, faith, hope, recovery, freedom, light, joy to every single human being in and out of this program behind the wheel, standing in line, people who I'm resentful at. I have a prayer now where I, instead of sh- sh- uh, saying, you know, I an aspiration that folks be um relieved of their suffering, that that all sentient beings know um, really the, the criteria for happiness and freedom and that they never, ever be separated from those things. Thank you. And that, um, that every single human being would come to make absolutely no separation between friends and their enemy. Wouldn't our world right now, our nation be so different if we could just have a second of that? And I have found that this is what I've had to do. So, you know, um, this blessed mess uh, really having me learn how to understand the hidden treasures and the really hard stuff of life was really, really helpful. The Shack, if you haven't read it, it's an extremely beautiful book. The Feminine Face of God, there is a way that women suffer and need to seek God maybe differently than men. Um, open mind, open heart. Thomas Keating, y'all, if you don't know him, he will break you off cold-blooded on how to do some centering prayer. Um, The four agreements, man, was that a good one? Was that a good one? Right. Um, Man's search for meaning. Wow. Victor Frankl and those folks who were in concentration camps, Jesus. Um, You know, I didn't know people were making love in concentration camps, but that was so good to learn. And then our boy Emmett Fox uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, that's the way of self-forgetting. Our book gives us a template to forget ourselves. And it is, you know, um, that St. Francis prayer, you know, and those 17 questions in the evening, right? those 17 questions in the evening. And I don't know which ones you guys got stuck on. But uh, the one that I always find is what could I have done better, not as a beat me up, but just to visualize what I could have done better. So the next day that I could. And the other one is, um, you know, what could I have packed into the stream of life? So beauty, I found beauty in so many things. I never thought I would know the beauty of, you know, losing uh, the ability to have children and not having any, 
But I can tell you, you know, when my friends are calling me complaining about their kids, I can give them like a radiant, like lightning sunlight of the spirit, all the love I have for them and their children and encourage them. I also didn't understand what beauty I would ever be able to touch in um, accompanying another human being through their dying and death process. But man, I wish that for everybody. I wish that for everybody, you know, and, um, you know, the, the, the turmoils of life, you know, racism, sexism, being fired, money, no money, being misunderstood. I have to tell you this 11 step practice and reading and walking with these giants, not trying to be giant, but trying to have my thought life placed on a higher plane, you know, I'll say this and, and close, you know, again, went to India and um, know what a privilege it is to be there and understand what abject poverty and uh, just incredible living conditions really mean. And I'm going to tell you what I came away with. You know, comfort and accommodations is individuality. And individuality is another form of selfishness. I actually don't have to have it any kind of way. There is so much loudness, craziness. You have 6 million people in a city the size of Santa Monica, which where you want to go to get silence, to be alone. You can't, your God ain't powerful enough for you to drop exactly where you are and be with God. Come on, baby. That's how powerful God truly is. The other thing is, is that this life is so short. When you're with people who have 5,000 years of knowing who they are, what their name is, where they're from, what their people do, you will know that this time I have, I got maybe 15 minutes left in my life, considerably speaking. And what do I want to spend it on? Don't want to spend it on the negativity. I want to shout from the rooftops. I am a woman reborn through the lens of Alcoholics Anonymous. And I am so grateful to be sober, to be alive, to have a plan and a program for living. And that 38 years in, I am still growing in depth, effectiveness, power, peace, and purpose. It is unending. We are the deathless. This thing has no time. Give yourself the time undistracted to be with whatever your God is and ask those questions. Where am I at with this? Is this taking me closer to a drink or further away? Can you show me how to be the man, woman, individual you need me to be to help this world know you so that we can all be free and happy? Alcoholics Anonymous has given me a life worth dying for and has introduced me to the inexplicable, never-ending beauty that life is. And when I came here, all I wanted to do was die. Is that not amazing? Thank you. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.